you're probably wondering why I'm filming in the bathroom. Because there's some bomb lighting. Why am I wearing this hat? Because it's cool. And I can. Hola guys, it's Kat. So, I've been wanting to get into like true crime and do like more conspiracy theories on the channel. I just hadn't got a chance. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a true crime or a mystery or something that happened in my state. And I found this one and I don't, like, I was 14 when this happened and I vaguely remember, like I just like, I remember his name. So some of you may or may not have heard of this story. On Tuesday, May 13th, 2008, Brandon Swanson, age 19, of Marshall, Minnesota, visited a few friends and had some drinks in nearby Lynn. The teen completed his first year of college at Minnesota West Community and Technical College that day. Between 10.30 and 11 p.m., Brandon left the celebration and drove to another friend's house in Canby to say goodbye to a classmate. Brandon did not appear intoxicated according to his friends. By the way, my apologies, I, when looking this up, there's so many different things depending on where you read from. There are some people who said that yeah, he was intoxicated and there's other people who said no, he wasn't. Witnesses at the Canby party said that he had an additional shot of whiskey but then left sometime around midnight to go back to Marshall. Highway 68 is a direct route from Canby to Marshall with an approximately 30 minute driving time. Around 1.15 a.m. May 14th, Brandon got his car hung up in a ditch along a gravel road. He attempted to call his friends for help, but nobody answered, so he called his parents. Brian and Annette Swanson and informed them about his situation and that he needed a ride. He said he was between Marshall and Lynn and gave his location. He also said he was not injured from the accident. His parents drove to pick up their son. When they arrived at the location that Brandon had given them, he was nowhere to be seen. Annette called him on his cell phone and they both agreed to flash the lights to let each other know where they were. She could hear Brandon flashing the car lights on at that point. She kept saying, we're flashing our lights, we're flashing our lights. His response to her was, don't you see me? They never saw him. Frustrated, Brandon hung up on his mom and Annette quickly called him back to apologize for getting frustrated. He told her he could see Lynn's town lights and he was going to walk towards them. Brandon said to meet him at Lynn Tavern parking lot. While driving, Brian and Brandon talked via their cell phones. Brandon explained to Brian that he was going to cut through fields so it'd be quicker. Along the way, he walked on gravel roads and saw two fence lines and heard running water. The call lasted about 47 minutes when all of a sudden Brandon yelled, oh shit, and the call was disconnected. His father said it sounded like Brandon had slipped and fell. Numerous attempts to reach Brandon's phone were unsuccessful. The phone rang each time it was called until the next day when calls went straight to voicemail. Brandon has not had any communications with his parents since. At 6 a.m., Brandon's parents called police to report him missing. Police told them to wait a while because it wasn't unheard of for a young males to go off the grid for a bit. However, later that day, cell phone records showed Brandon was near Porter, Minnesota, not Lynn. Porter sits between Canby and Marshall along Highway 68. A search began around 12.30 p.m. Brandon's Chevrolet Lumina sedan was found about a mile and a half north of Teuton. There was no physical damage to the vehicle or evidence of bodily injury. The vehicle was found on kind of a sharp incline, so the wheels couldn't really touch the ground or get any traction. Over the following months, law enforcement used 
all-terrain vehicles to search areas of Lincoln, Illinois, and Yellow Medicine counties and bodies of water, including Yellow Medicine River. The authorities believed that Brandon fell into the into a body of water and drowned. However, search dogs followed his scent to the river's edge but continued walking on. This suggested that Brandon probably fell into the water, managed to get out, and continued walking. The temperature that night was around 39 degrees. So Brandon may have succumbed to hypothermia. Search dogs picked up the scent of human remains a few times, specifically in an area north of Porter near Mud Creek, but no body was ever found. Police do not have any evidence of foul play and believe Brandon's remains are within the 122 square mile search area. So when researching this, like I said, that I found a couple of different things that kind of contradicted each other or were like different or whatever. One of the things being that when the dogs continued through the water, the, the river that the dogs had followed, I believe was Yellow Medicine River, and then continued onto a gravel road where they lost the scent. Now, they're saying that they think that the scent just kind of stopped because the road had been like re-graveled that morning. There was different things in there, um, but the whole reason that the search didn't begin immediately is when his parents had contacted police basically saying that because he's an adult, if he wants to take off, he can. Which is absolutely just not right. They came to them telling them what they heard. Clearly, Brandon was in distress. And because of this whole awful ordeal, there was something positive that was created, and it's called Brandon's Law. This law basically makes it so that law enforcement has to investigate immediately when someone's reported missing, especially if there is a dangerous circumstance that is happening, no matter their age. Who knows how many people that this law has probably saved because law enforcement searched for them immediately despite their age. Because if law enforcement had intervened immediately, Brandon might have been found. My guess is he would have been found probably right away. I'm just gonna say what I personally am theorizing is what happened. There's a bunch of different theories on it, but personally, my suspicion is the reason why he was taking all these back roads and the reason why he was so backwards on where he was at is I think that he was drinking that night. And so he got confused and he was taking back roads as not to get in trouble. This was a good kid. Like he wasn't somebody who got in trouble. Because maybe he wasn't like wasted, but just enough to be confused. He was stuck somewhere not knowing where he was at and slightly intoxicated, he crossed through these fences in between farms or whatever until he did slip fall into the river get back up which is why his phone stopped working because it got wet kept going his phone died eventually but it probably just wasn't working at all because it got wet but it would still ring even if it wasn't really working when he got to that road i'm wondering if maybe somebody picked him up like Perhaps the scent stopped right there because he got into somebody's car and they took off with him. That's just my theory, you know, maybe it is because of the they lost the scent because the gravel was like it was like re-graveled or whatever, but my first thought was, well maybe he just got in a car and they took off. <laughs> because think about it, depending what time he got there, how cold he was and how cold the weather was that night you might just hop into a stranger's car. That's just my thought, but there's a bunch of different theories. Some people think that he went to a field and fell asleep and ended up getting killed by a tractor or something. Some people think an animal got him, which that's possible too. There's many different theories. Tell me what you think happened to him in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my little rainbow. That's the sound of freedom. There's many, many. I think I'm probably just gonna say my theories on this, on what I think happened. Um, finishing up my video quick. What? I'm finishing up my video. You what? Finishing up my video. I'm actually at the end of the video, so.